So, your place or mine? Both. Both? Yes. You go to yours and I'll go to mine. It's love hour here at Kippy's Quest. Don't you mean love ten minutes? Speak for yourself. Anyway, the Two of Cups is a card of love and devotion. Straight away we can see the comparison to the Lovers back at number 6 in the Major Arcane. In fact, it's been described as a lesser version of the Lovers. Rachel Pollack says, while the Trump shows the great power of mature sexual relationships, the Minor card emphasises the beginning of a relationship. Now this doesn't just apply to romantic couplings, but also to the dawn of a new friendship. So on the surface, we're really talking about the union between two people. We can certainly see that on the Wade Smith card, where we've got a man and a woman each holding a cup and connecting to one another in an almost matrimonial image. In the key to the tarot, Arthur Edward Waite says a youth and maiden are pledging one another, and above their cups rises the caduceus of Hermes, between the great wings of which there appears a lion's head. So the caduceus of Hermes is usually depicted as a staff with two snakes winding around it and a pair of wings at the top. You may recognise it from various hospitals and medical institutions, particularly in the US. In Greek mythology, Hermes was considered to be the messenger of the gods. The Romans called him Mercury, and in ancient Egypt he was known as Thoth, who Crowley named his tarot deck after. According to legend, the Caduceus was a gift from Hermes' half-brother Apollo, and has become a symbol of healing and wisdom. The winged lion goes all the way back to Mesopotamian mythology, where it was known as the Lamassu. However, Waite is most likely referring to the biblical winged lion, which we also saw on the Wheel of Fortune card. Oi, Leo, stop looking at Anubis's ass. I wasn't. I never did. The lion is one of the four living creatures from the book of Ezekiel and has been attributed to Saint Mark the Evangelist. What I find interesting about the Two of Cups is that if you compare it to the Lover's Card, we've got Adam and Eve with the Archangel Raphael floating above them, who also carries a caduceus. It's, it's all, all connected. connected. Anyway, Wade goes on to say it's a variant of a sign which is found in a few old examples of this card. Some curious emblematical meanings are attached to it, but they do not concern us in this place. Oh, don't they? Well, that's alright then, isn't it? We'll have a look at the old examples of the card later, but for now, let's check out the Thoth version. So apart from looking like a fountain from Dame Edna's garden, there's the usual plethora of symbolism to pick through. Crowley says the hieroglyph of the card represents two cups in the foreground overflowing upon a calm sea. They are fed with loosened water from a lotus floating above the sea, from which rises another lotus around whose stem are entwined twin dolphins. We've got the signs for Venus and Cancer at the top of the card, which we'll get to later, but I think it's fair to say that this is a very pleasant image, especially when we compare it to some of the later cup cards in the Thoth deck. Crowley goes on to say it shows the harmony of the male and the female, interpreted in the largest sense. It is perfect and placid harmony, radiating an intensity of joy and ecstasy. Now the Thoth version does refer to one of the other meanings of the card, that being the concept of ideas coming together to create a new whole. Later in his entry on the Two of Cups, Crowley says the number two referring to Will. This card might really be renamed Lord of Love under Will, for that is the full and true meaning. So you may have come across his maxim, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under Will. When Crowley talks about Will, he's referring to our true purpose, and figuring that out was what he believed to be our number one priority, as long as our actions are aligned with love. In this sense, we could say that the card represents the harmonious balance between love and purpose. Lomala de Quet says the card is magnificently beautiful and a fitting representative of the first manifestation of the element water. The Sforza and Marseille cards both look flowery and... cuppy. Is that even a word? It is now. Anyway, on my Marseille deck, the Two of Cups has this writing at the bottom. I was expecting it to be some deep esoteric truth, but it actually translates to fine tarot made by Ignaz Kreb from Freiburg in Brasgau. So it's just the name of the guy who printed the cards and where he was from. Now if you look up the Marseille Tarot, you'll find that there are quite a few different versions, but on the forums, the illustrations on my particular deck have been described as... Crap. However, you have to remember that these cards were printed from the original woodcuttings, so I think they're the most authentic. Take that, Mystic Sex God 69. The Solar Busker has another absurdly elaborate pair of what might function as cups placed on top of each other to save space. In the top vessel, we've got one of the musicians from the last card, all on his lonesome. Maybe he's been kicked out of the band and now he's playing a sad song on his violin. Never mind, I'm sure the other cherubs wish him all the best in his solo career. 
Let us examine the two, through two cups whose number two, specific to man and to the woman, expressing the invariability of vegetation or reproduction. It's Aila there, seeing if he can break the world record for how many times you can use the number two in a sentence. Also, it's important that we don't get confused between reproduction and vegetation, unless you're trying to spice things up in the bedroom by introducing vegetables. Will you be my girlfriend? I already have a boyfriend. I have a science test tomorrow. What's that got to do with anything? I thought we were listing things we could cheat on. The hermetic title for the Two of Cups is Lord of Loves. It's a pretty obvious title from the Golden Dawn for this one. Exactly what it says on the tin, really. On the Wade Smith card, we've got the most straightforward interpretation of love. But that card also brings us back to the idea of uniting the masculine and feminine qualities within ourselves. Rachel Pollack says, while the man symbolizes action and movement, the woman symbolizes emotion, sensitivity, and an appreciation of experience. By uniting these two qualities, we give our lives value. The Two of Cups corresponds to the Cancer Zodiac sign and to the planet Venus. Well, it had to be Venus, didn't it? Planet of love, romance, beauty and art. Cancer is considered to be the most receptive of the Zodiac signs, so this combination is certainly one of the more harmonious that we come across in the Tarot. Venus in Cancer signifies an emotional, nurturing and sensitive approach to love and relationships, so when we apply that to the Two of Cups, I think we get an emphasis on emotional connections. Venus in Cancer celebrities include Kim Kardashian, Robert De Niro and Stevie Nicks. The Two of Cups resides in the world of Bria and sits at the second Sephira of Hokma, at the top of the Pillar of Mercy. Now I have been asked to clarify some of the terms when talking about the Tree of Life in relation to the Tarot. So the Ten Spheres or Sephirot refer to ten different aspects of consciousness and creation. The cards of the Minor Arcana correspond to each of these spheres, while the Major Arcana cards sit on the 22 paths between them. However, I'm barely scratching the surface here. I am planning to do a full series on the Tree of Life when I've worked my way through the Tarot, but if you'd like to find out more in the meantime, I can highly recommend The Chicken Kabbalah by Lon Milo Duquette. I learnt a huge amount from this book, but it's also really funny and entertaining. I've got a very short attention span, but Lon always manages to keep me engaged, and I end up learning despite myself. Also, there's a great YouTube video by a fella called Andrew T. Austin, who introduces the concepts in a really straightforward, down-to-earth way that resonated with me. I'll put a link to both of those in the description. Anyway, we're at the second Sephira of Hotmar for this one, and because it's the suit of cups, that means we're in the watery world of Briar. Hokmar is the second Sephira on the tree and translates to wisdom. This ties in with the Caduceus we were talking about earlier, symbol of healing and wisdom. It's considered to be a masculine Sephira. His real regard is said, we ascertain that the second Sephira Hokmar, or wisdom, is male, vigorous and active. The Two of Cups herb is Bearberry. This herb has been used as a powerful diuretic. Ah, where's the toilet? But what does it all mean? So the most obvious meaning for the Two of Cups is love and romance between two people. Wade says love, passion, friendship, affinity, union, concord, sympathy, the interrelation of the sexes, and that desire which is not in nature, but by which nature is sanctified. A desire that's not in nature sounds a bit like a dark part of the internet, but as the internet wasn't invented for another 80 years, I'm going to assume he was talking about something else. New friendships are another important aspect of the card, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic situation. Also, collaborations play a big part with this one, working together on something creative, or anything that requires a shared understanding and mutual support. Or it could mean the uniting of your finger with the subscribe button. For God's sake, man, you've got no shame! Finally, there's the uniting of different ideas within ourselves. This channel came about from linking my experience in audio production and making music to my desire for spiritual growth and curiosity of ritual magic. However, the overarching theme of the card is relationships. Rachel Pollack says, in study and most commonly in practice, it indicates the pledging of friendships and the beginning of a love affair. It is an indication of hopes not met and non-success. The whole meaning of this tarot is a favourable omen, either in love or in a commercial enterprise, or in a party of pleasure. Party of pleasure sounds like the kind of party that I don't get invited to. 
The reverse two of cups can be an indicator of challenges or disruptions in relationships. This could mean problems in communicating with a partner or colleague. Waite says, nothing. Not a sausage for this one. Perhaps he got fed up with the whole reversals thing and went off to play billiards, or whatever it is they did in those days. Fortunately, Rachel Pollack didn't slack off for this entry. She says reversed, it can mean a love affair or friendship which has gone sour in some way, in particular because of jealousy and a breakdown of trust. In reverse, your wishes will be in vain and you will soon be at odds with a younger person. Like when you stole my last chocolate bar. I didn't steal it, I borrowed it. How do you borrow a chocolate bar? I mean, how would you give it back? Actually, don't answer that. The big takeaway for the Two of Cups is the concepts of love, friendships and unity, whether that's the bringing together of people or ideas. If you wanted to get metaphysical about it, you could say the uniting of the microcosm with the macrocosm, or the conscious with the unconscious. This card always makes me think of the quote from Alistair Crowley, for I am divided for love's sake, for a chance of union. Thank you for putting up with yet more meandering cobblers here at Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you hanky-panky and the loving kindness to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.